And here I am again, after a two-month hiatus that included COVID and what seems like at least a dozen behavioral challenges that I'm willing to bet we're all of us meeting at this time. Well, hopefully we're doing our best to enhance our surroundings these days. Enhance. Such a lovely, soft word for hard times. But I digress. I promise to make my introduction brief this time as I want to share this vlog with the two talented gentlemen who've been running with the ball since the end of last year's recording sessions for Charlene's audio production of The Unsymmetrical. So, let me turn my focus now to both Matt Straub, our brilliant New York City sound editor and engineer, and London-based composer Stav Dryman. Take it away, Matt and Stav. Hey everyone, this is Matt. I am the sound designer and audio engineer for The Unsymmetrical. And I am coming to you all from the vocal booth that we've recorded a number of our actors in for The Unsymmetrical Project. We're happy to say that we've wrapped on recording all of our voice actors, which is a project that took a while to figure out what the best way was and how we were going to get our the, our characters out of them, and it all thankfully worked. And we've got a great cast of, of actors that really brought everything that we needed to the table, and you're, you'll hear more of that as we uh, move forward here. I've also been working very closely with both John and Stav uh, to put the rest of this project together and to create a few tests or trailers to kind of model what we might be doing for the full-length project. Now, while these brief snippets are only less than 60 seconds long, they provide a really good example of the kind of underscoring, sound design, and audio effects that we're going to be applying to the project as a whole. And a lot of that's influenced from stuff that I've personally experienced. My father, in the heyday, worked in radio broadcasting for about 16 years. And so while doing some research to start making the effects for this project, I reached out to him and we had some conversations about what microphones were used and how they sounded and what frequency responses they had. And I looked up their manuals. Um, I'm also heavily inspired by the sound of the Victrola that my parents have sitting in their dining room and how it's almost too noisy to understand dialogue sometimes, but yet it always seems to cut through. Um, And that's the real audio aesthetic that we're going for for this project. Um, And like I said, we've already made a few trailers and teasers to kind of test the waters in terms of what we can put out there to help share more information about the project and for us to experiment and see exactly what it's going to sound like. Hello, I'm Stav, I'm a composer, and I'll be writing the musical score for The Unsymmetrical. One of the reasons this production is near and dear to my heart is, well, my own personal obsession with musical storytelling in general and with the golden age of radio drama in particular. There's just something so special about being able to just close your eyes and let yourself drift into a story where voice and music all come together, creating this private theater of the mind. Now I'm super excited to be writing the score for The Unsymmetrical and also working with a group of talented professionals. I'm sure you're going to like it. So good to have you here and join us for this journey. Thank you. We have finally finished all of our recording of our talent and our voice actors for this project, um, which was our goal for 2021. Now, as we move into the new year, our goal is going to be to take all of those separate files, just like we did for those short 40 second trailers, but do that to the entire 70 something page script um, to kind of weave all of the different takes of different actors together, which is, you know, obviously different from how, you know, traditional radio theater was created. um, But in a way, it also proves us uh, to have even more creative abilities in post-production to have so many different takes of different line reads, higher energy, lower energy, you know, a faster line read or a slower line read. And, you know, even after we're done with the actors, we can go back and choose, well, what fits better with this scene or in this monologue? You know, sort of reverse engineering the whole thing, because I think one, you know, main thing with with radio plays, it was, everything was live, you know, music was live, acting was live, sound effects was live, polys, you know, you had the guy doing that, you know, when somebody was walking, making that sound, that clinky clonk sound. 
yeah. and we're actually using like modern technology to try and reproduce that sort of, of vibe, which is a yeah. challenge, but it's, it's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Also degrading sound, you know, taking something which sounds very hi-fi and try and take it back, um, mm -hmm. making it sound authentic. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's going well, you know. Definitely, yeah. I, uh, as I mentioned in my earlier part of the video, my dad actually used to work in radio. And when I first started working on this project, I asked him for information on the frequency range. And he actually sent me a, a diagram of the frequency response of microphones that would have been used in that time. So I could better match the curve of what we hear to what it would have been if it was recorded on a, a microphone of the time. So definitely trying to, like you said, using the the technology where we could make something that sounds crystal clear, but then having the control to be able to bring us back into a different time period with it. Um, and that's really, the, you know, that's the time period that we really found most of the inspiration from. Yeah, that sort of romantic music, kind of a bit over the top, but it's also, like I've said, for me, it is a love letter for that era because there's something so comforting about that sort of sound, you know, uh, that sound, sort of analog, sort of uh, um, atmosphere that it creates. And I think it's, it's you know, it, it would resonate with people, not only with people who actually grew up and listened to this stuff, but also for, you know, like young people who would be exposed to some sort of, well, it's something old, but it is something new. You get what I say? It's like both. Mm -hmm. it's, it's old, but it's new, which is cool. Definitely. Definitely. And we hope that everyone else is just as excited as we are. And we'll be looking forward to having more for you to listen to in the future. Again, I want to thank all of you who chose to back Charlan, a cottage industry, during our Indiegogo campaign last quarter. You've boosted our creative morale considerably. I mean it. We count you as the without which nothing gang that keeps our engine running. So until next time, Continue to be well and remain engaged. Bye-bye for now.